In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the process that I use to include CodePen projects in WordPress site, including their CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, where to put them, how to set them up, and then how to tweak them if necessary. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we are all about WordPress. And if you want to get better at WordPress, make sure you stick around and hit the bell icon or the thumbs up or both while you're at it. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. So here we are at CodePen. This is the project we're going to include in our WordPress site. CodePen is all front stack development, meaning it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There is no backend development, no backend stack in CodePen, meaning there's no dynamic language, no database. And in case you're curious, if someone tells you they're a full stack developer, it means they do HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and a dynamic language, and a database language, usually PHP or ASP, and MySQL or SQL, or the 100, others, the 100 other database languages you can do. And if they're a front-end developer, they're just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and if they're a back-end developer, they're some dynamic server language and a database. Either way, I digress. Uh, this is what we're going to add. We have our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript right here. And the way we're going to do this is the quick and dirty way, which means we're going to include the code in the easiest way possible. And then I'll link to the tutorial where I show you how to do it the hardest way possible. And we'll take it from there. And so because things happen and things change, I've actually transferred this same code over to the blog that I've linked to in the description down below. And this is just for safekeeping, essentially, because if... Tobias, the creator of the code, or CodePen, for whatever reason, change the, the code, and that breaks the tutorial, that kind of breaks things. So I just have the tutorial or the code here. I've got a link back to the project here as well. Um, anyway, now that we're here, we are going to copy the HTML. So double click into the HTML field, copy all of it, go into your WordPress site, and create a new page. Just going to go to Pages and then Add New. This page is using Gutenberg. As you can see, you can do this inside of Elementor, you can do this inside of Gutenberg, you can do this inside of a regular HTML version of the post editor if you disabled Gutenberg. Anywhere where you can add custom HTML to a page, you can use this code. So first let's add a title. Let's call this um, uh, terminal text code pen named after the actual project name on code or on code pen. I'm going to add a new block. I'm going to add custom HTML. This is in my most used list. If you don't see it there, which you probably won't, go down to, I think it's common blocks. No, formatting. Still getting used to Gutenberg. There it is, custom HTML. Click on that. It'll add it to the page. Now we can paste in our HTML code that we got from the blog, or it's the exact same from CodePen. Then I'm going to go ahead and copy all the JavaScript. This is the exact same as from CodePen, so you copy from here as well. Just copy everything in this box. Let's duplicate this custom HTML element. Delete what's in there and paste in our JavaScript code. Something to watch for, there are no script tags in this code that's copy and pasted from CodePen. So we need to tell the page in WordPress and the browsers that this is JavaScript. And we do that by adding a script tag, giving it a type of text slash JavaScript, and then closing the script tag. And the closing tag, we're going to remove from here. I just cut that. We're going to paste it at the very bottom. Now we have valid JavaScript wrapped in a script tag. You notice all those warnings are now gone, all those, all those yellow triangles, those warning signs, they're all gone now. And we can go ahead and it's auto-saving right now. And while it's doing that, it's done already actually. Let's just copy the CSS. Now we're going to put this inside of Appearance, Customize. We're going to open the customizer. This is one of the many places you can add custom CSS. If you're using a page builder, if you have Elementor Pro, for example, you can put custom CSS right on the same page where you're putting this code pen code. If you're using Divi, you can do that as well. They have page-based 
uh, WP Bakery page builder has page based CSS. Th some themes have a CSS box where you can enter CSS. There are lots of different places you can put it. And in this case, we're going to put it in the customizer. If we load the customizer, which we have here, we see additional CSS as an option. This is pretty much in every single customizer setup. Now we have a CSS box, right? Click into there and paste. And now we have the CSS from the code pin in there. Click on publish. Now that our CSS is in place, let's go back to the page we're editing and let's click on preview. Pretty sure I saved the draft. So we can preview it. And now we should have something resembling the code pen project. So now we have our code pen appearing on the page here and it's displaying the same way it does on code pen but it's not in the proper spot. It's overlapping some of the content. It's not where it should be. And this will likely happen for a lot of CodePen projects. They're not designed from the ground up to fit into a specific kind of layout or a page. So there's gonna to have to be some adjustments made after CodePen is put onto a page, more than likely. So to find out what we have to do, let's right click on the CodePen text area, click on inspect. This is Google Chrome. You would use inspector, I believe, in Firefox. And the code loads, let's click on console container. We have the CSS showing up on the right hand side here. And let's just change the height of this code pen to see if that affects what's placement. And it looks like it does. We take the height right down to zero. We're actually below the content there. Let's move the height up a little bit. This would not normally be the proper way of adjusting spacing, but for this code pen, it appears to work. And it seems the height is, or the code pen typing, the writing is independent of the height. So normally the text would be starting to get cut off if the height was less than the, the size of the text. But in this case, that's not happening. Uh, so clearly there's something else going on. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna go back into the customizer. I'm gonna change the height from 200 to 77. Publish that. I'm gonna go back into the page, I'm going to add a new element, just a paragraph element, and say this is content, and then move this up to the top of the page, and click on it's auto saving, which is nice. Now let's see if this saved. It appears to have saved, and we should be able to refresh out here and have a new position for our code pen. So now we have a new position for it. It's a little bit better than before. And what I'm doing here is based entirely on just randomness. I, I don't know exactly how you'd want to use this code pen, but this is how you include it on a page. And then you have to make adjustments as you go. So you do have to tweak the CSS and maybe HTML, maybe even the JavaScript a little bit to make it work. But if you, for example, wanted this to be the title or the headline of a page and a background image behind it, you may have to adjust things. Or if you want this in your footer, maybe you want to type out your copyright text just to have some kind of cool effect in your footer. You'd obviously have to make the text a bit smaller and then change the color. And you can do those things inside of the script. In this one specifically, you can change the font size right here. The 4M is the font size. The color of the text is set to white, but then the color is overwritten in the JavaScript. We set the color, the words are set here. So the console text is hello world, then console text, then made with love. And the colors are tomato, Rebecca purple, and light blue. So you'd want to change all these things more than likely for your website. And, and also just depending on what position where you want to have this thing to, to, to live once it's in your website. But that is how we include it on a website. And beyond that, um, I can't get into more specifics because I don't know how you'd use it. And if you're trying to include a code pen and you're having trouble with it, just leave a comment down below and I'm sure myself or somebody else will be able to help you with it. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you follow along, then hit the bell icon or the thumbs up and check out our private Facebook group, link to in the description down below. And next up, just click on one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side to get an even better WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.